You've literally got to be joking, sis. Um, adjust. Hi, what's up? So, I just finished filming this video and I looked back at the intro and it was a little boring. Um, I was not here and I just wanted to redo it real quick. So I thought in today's video that I would do a little story time video. I've done a story time before, wasn't that good, but we can't change that now. And in today's video, I thought it would be a good idea to mush together a bunch of different stories from the time that I used to work at a laser tag facility. And the way this video is gonna be laid out, I'm gonna start with the least juicy story and it's gonna work up to the best story that I have. If you keep on watching, I'll explain more about what the place was like and then I'll work up to the uh, the kicker. Okay, I just wanna say that. And disclaimer, I will not be saying the name of anybody that used to work there except for the people that I got permission from and I will not be saying the name of the actual business that I worked at because I don't wanna get sister sued. Without further ado, let's jump into the video. Okay, hope you enjoy. To set the story, to really paint this picture for you, I have to explain what this place was, okay? So, without being too descriptive, I'm gonna really, I'm gonna explain what it was like there. This place was a laser tag facility. In this facility, it wasn't just laser tag. That's what made it different from like all the other laser tag places in the area. There was laser tag, which was the main attraction basically. The laser tag was different than like other places. So, you know, like traditional laser tag is like with looking guns not super realistic it's kind of like just for fun yeah that's like not what this place was the key point of this laser tag that made it different was the fact that it was realistic the guns in the laser tag looked like real guns you would wear the vests all the vests had sensors on them you know what i'm saying <clears throat> On the laser tag field, there was two points and these were the spawn points. At each point of the map, this is where a different team would start. And at each side, there was a button that you would push to like respawn back into the game after you were shot. Anyways, the other things this place had, they also had a little area where you could play Nerf. If you're wondering why I'm looking down, I'm looking at my computer because I had to write this all into notes because this is, it's a lot. The other area was virtual reality. So it was basically just like 12 sets of those like goggle thingies that let you play virtual reality in. And then the final aspect of this place was that um, there was a bar in it. It's a good concept, but not really, it had its flaws, you know? So as you can tell now, this place was not just meant for like little kids since like most of the things there were only meant for people like above the age of literally 15. Um, I just brushed my teeth and that's gross. By the way, I just had a severe nosebleed like 20 minutes ago, but we don't have to get into that. Okay, so let's just get into the different stories. In my time working at this place, I almost said the name. Whew. At the time of me working here, I worked there for about a year and my position was mainly in the laser tag portion of the place. Each game of laser tag, it held a good amount of people. So every single day you would see quite a lot of people, different types of people coming through this place. And not all of them were nice. If you've ever worked in retail or fast food or literally anywhere, you'll know that people are assholes. The different types of people, here's some examples. First of all, mean customers, mean soccer moms, mean hillbillies. Those are just my favorite. Yee -yee. I love hillbillies, they love me. And then the last type of person who would come through this place all the time was children. This job, not gonna lie, kind of made me never want to have kids ever, but I'm gay, so I don't have to worry about that. I'll just adopt. With all those people coming in to play laser tag came a lot of cleaning up after people. And there has been some numerous times that I've had to clean up bodily fluids. One of the bodily fluids I've had to clean up before was blood. Cause you have to realize the guns in the laser tag were literally seven pounds, metal replicas of real guns. So that's why there was the flaw of letting children under the age of literally seven play laser tag. If the child can't hold it, why would you let them play? Anyways, so there would be constant times when someone would get injured and we would have to um, clean up after them. I did this 
numerous times. And normally it would go down like, I would be out in the laser tag area. And in each laser tag game, there's normally two people watching and walking around during the game to like make sure everyone's safe, you know? And being one of those game refs, the amount of times I've seen children literally get knocked unconscious in front of me and then basically having to hold them while walking them back to the main lobby while they're dripping blood like ew and then having to go back and clean up the blood so there's that the other time i've had to clean up a bodily fluid which i'll never forget one night there was this man and he was in my group in the laser tag session and we got through about two games and i could tell he was a little um chocolate wasted again don't know why there's a bar in an area like that i could tell he was getting a little um queasy by the end of the third game because he was turning a slight shade of green so i kept asking him like hey are you okay like do you need water do you need to sit out he's just like no i'm fine like i don't need to sit out i can keep playing i'm good and I'm just like, okay, um, well, he said he was fine. So I just let it slide. Big mistake on my part. Right before the last game starts, this guy, he comes back to base and he's sitting on one of the like props that we have. And he looks like he's out of breath, which is normal because the laser tag is pretty intense. And he's like leaning over and I'm like, sir. And again, I ask him, are you okay? And he goes, yes, I'm fine, but do you have a bathroom? And immediately I knew what the f was going down. So I said, yes, sir, it's right around the corner, turn left and it's right there. As he's saying the words, okay to me, he leans over behind the crate at the base and fucking throws up everything in his stomach. And instantly you can smell it, on the entire side of the warehouse that this place was in. So I'm like, oh, awesome. We take everyone back to the start where they turn in their gear. And because this was early in the time of me working there, of course my coworkers were like, oh, you're cleaning it up. Like go get a mop because I was the newbie. So I had to go get a mop and mops don't really help clean up things like vomit now, do they? So I basically just had to push around throw up with a mop and water. So those are the times that I can remember that I had to clean up gross things. Okay, on to the next story. In the laser tag, I forgot to mention, the guns had to be reloaded because back when I first started working there, these giant metal guns were loaded with air canisters and this made it so that the guns would make a popping noise every time you would pull the trigger to like intensify the game more. And this was annoying for the workers because you would literally just have to stand there and um, listen to children yell at you to reload their guns. There is one time when one of the game modes we were playing, both teams could go on either side of the map to get reloaded. Normally you have to be on that team to get reloaded by that team leader. But this game, it wasn't like that. It was just kind of everyone for themselves. You can go anywhere like to either person to reload your gun. And I was on one side of the map and I had a line forming of children waiting for me to pop their magazine out, take the air canister out, replace it with a new one, put it back in the magazine and shove it in the gun. Keep in mind, this takes a good like 10 seconds to do. Like after you have been there for a while, it doesn't take you as long. There was this man that was waiting in the line, but he wasn't like taking control of his urge to get his gun reloaded. Like when you want to get your gun reloaded, like you gotta shove up to me. I'm too busy looking down at the magazines that I'm being handed to look up at you. So this man stood behind a group of like six children for like five minutes and new kids keep coming up while he's still waiting in the same area of the line. And finally, I get done with the last round of kids before like more come up to me. And he finally walks up to me and looks at me and goes, you're cheating. And I'm thinking in my head, excuse me, that doesn't, okay. So I ask him, I go, sir, what do you mean that I'm cheating? And he goes, you just reloaded all those kids before me and they're on the other team and you just let me sit on the sidelines and you didn't reload me, so you're cheating. And I had to explain to him, honey, when you want your gun reloaded, sir, I didn't say it, bitchy. I'm just getting triggered right now. If you want your gun reloaded, sir, you have to uh, take charge and basically shove to me because I would have reloaded you. It went on for like five minutes of him basically yelling at me, telling him that I was cheating for the other team, which made no sense because um, when you work there, you don't give a f 
about who's on your team, who's on the other team. They're just customers. So I wasn't favoring anyone over him. Anyways, um, after that little tiff happened at my work every area of the building has a camera just like surveillance for safety reasons and one of my co-workers comes up to me she walks onto the laser tag field comes up to me and she goes you okay and i go yeah why she's like i just watched that whole argument on the cameras in the lobby because the cameras on the laser tag field are displayed on a flat screen in the lobby for like the parents to watch. So I was getting in a fight with a customer on camera. Anyways, so I was like, yeah, it's fine. Because like five minutes later, he comes up to me and goes, You know what, bro? I'm sorry. You seem like a really good person and I disrespected you. We cool? And I'm like, yes. Okay, go play laser tag now. Anyways little off topic, but one time before a game started, someone walks up to me, looks me dead in my face and says, excuse me, ma'am, can you reload me? Do I look like a fucking ma'am to you? So that was that. So this next story, I wasn't working this shift, but I did hear absolutely everything. I saw videos of it and I had to help clean up the um, mess after this happened. So I think I'm allowed to tell it. This place allowed people to rent it out for different sorts of occasions, whether that be birthday parties, bachelor parties, bar mitzvahs. You could literally have anything at this place if you paid enough money to go there. And one of the things that people would have, they would pay for their entire sorority, along with a frat, to go to this place. And one time, a bus, actually no, two buses, one filled with sorority girls, the other filled with frat boys. You can probably tell where this is going. These two parties come in, they all start doing like laser tag, all this kind of stuff. And you can already tell that they um, pre-gamed beforehand because apparently they were being really fucking obnoxious during this. And like, if you're in college, like act your age, don't act like a child, okay? After a while of the sorority being there, my coworkers heard a noise and all of a sudden the fire alarm went off. So this sorority thought it was a good idea to pull the fire alarm for no reason. And they were all evacuated outside. And basically my boss at the time knew exactly what was up and like wasn't stupid. So basically yelled at them for like 20 minutes telling them if you wanna keep playing here, don't fucking pull our fire alarm. Cause like, why would you do that? Cause it's like, it panics the workers and also a fire truck will come. Like, what did you expect? And then after that happened, they stayed until like two in the morning, but that's pretty normal. And after they left, there was a fucking mess everywhere. And while my coworkers were cleaning up literally everything from these people, one of my coworkers was cleaning the bathroom, which mm, I have a lot of memories from cleaning that bathroom. One of my coworkers walks into the bathroom and sees that. So you know how urinals have like those walls in between to like stop you from looking at each other's or whatever. One of these walls was completely broken off the wall. So this party thought it would be a good idea to pull the fire alarm, make a mess, and break the urinal wall for no reason. Anyways, so we had to um, order a new one to re-drill into the wall between the urinals. Next story. This is one of the names that I was given permission to use. This guy was a character within himself. He was literally the face of this facility for a long time because he was just so passionate about it. He was good with people. He had the whole character going on. This guy's name was Tarzan. He was a big black guy with dreadlocks. If you were a newbie, at Tarzan was like your mentor. He helped guide you through everything. He was the badass of this place. Everyone liked him. He was really good at his job. But if you messed with him, he could really f you up good, you know? Like he could break you. One time I was running to the opposite side of the laser tag area and he was running, but he was running the other way. And I didn't see him until I was on the floor blacking out from um, the lack of oxygen in my lungs for him knocking me out cold. Anyways, I think I broke a rib, but I don't know. Tarzan also had his fair share of stories to tell us all the time because like he's Tarzan. And one time we were on the topic, it was me, my coworker and him all just chilling back in laser tag when there was no games going on. And we got on the topic of drugs and I told him that 
I, the whole hallucinogen thing, never gonna do. I will never do that. I'm all talking about how some people I know have taken hallucinogens and that's not, not my thing. I will never do in my life. Tarzan was telling us about some times he took hallucinogens. He's basically telling me and my coworker that like, guys, if you ever want to try like any sort of one of these drugs, like just let me know because I will be your spirit guide. I will help you find your colors and whatever. <clears throat> and I'm just like, no, thank you. I appreciate it, but no, thank you. But I was interested in hearing about some of the stories that he had talking about these um, drugs and he starts telling us about the time that he experimented with shrooms. You can probably already see where this is going. One month, he decided that he, every single day he was gonna take one dosage higher of shrooms. So at the beginning of the month, he was gonna start taking a small amount. And then by the end of the month, he was gonna basically take a shit ton. Um, so no breaks, every single day, shrooms. Shroom festival. And Tarzan was telling us about how every single day the effects would basically intensify, as you would assume. As his body was adjusting to it, every single day he felt happier and happier. And it just made him, it made him whole. He said he felt like he had a pep in his step, which still did not convince me that I will ever do shrooms. But he was telling us near the end of his um, shroom journey, he was feeling pretty good. He said, on the last day of his little experiment, the effects were so powerful. Bro, I was doing so good. I would wake up in the morning, I would take my shrooms, colors would be brighter, the birds would be chirping. I felt like I heard some like cartoon music behind me everywhere I walked. He said, I will probably put this on a t-shirt. On the 30th day, he walked out of his house, vibing. He looked at a sunflower, smiled at it, and that bitch smiled right back at him. Then after he got off of it, he said he was not doing the best, which a month of shrooms can really do that to you. Don't do drugs, kids, unless you want sunflowers to like smile at you and So for the last few stories, these are, um, these are the best ones out of the whole video. And that's why I saved them for the end to keep your bitch ass watching. So at my work, one of the things that made it special, like I said, it would host different types of events. One of these events being raves. In my time working there, I experienced a lot of raves and I'm not the rave type of person, never been to one outside of my work. Don't really feel an urge to go to another one. But during these raves, things would get a little crazy. Let me tell you, there was one Friday night that a rave was happening and I wanted to go, but I didn't want to go alone. Most of my coworkers were bringing their friends. So I thought, why don't I? So I basically started like asking around my work, like, hey, I want to bring my friends. How do I, how do I make this happen? Because first of all, you have to be over 18 to get in. And at the time, all of my friends were under 18 and I was the only one who was 18. So this, it wasn't going to work. And the tickets were extremely expensive. And while this is happening at work, the people who were running the rave were slowly bringing all their stuff into the building. And I soon discovered that in order to get into the rave, you have to have a colored wristband. And these colored wristbands are normally stashed somewhere. And I couldn't get a hold of them. I did some searching, kind of did a couple laps around the building, trying to make it look like I was busy, but I was actually just trying to find these goddamn wristbands. So I'm helping move tables at the front door. And I notice on the front table, there is just stacks of the different colored wristbands in like sheets where you can rip them off. And you already know my bitch ass was not gonna let that uh, go. So I finessed. Over by the wristbands, there was my other coworker and I think someone who was working for the rave, but it was like more of a volunteer kind of situation. I walk over and I'm talking with my coworker and my coworker already knows damn well what I'm trying to do. And we're just talking to this person. As I was just like trying to make combo, I'm slowly grabbing a sheet off the top of every color of wristbands. So like each sheet has like six wristbands and I didn't know which color to grab because I don't know what the color codes were. And I'm making it look like I'm kind of just like fiddling with them in my hands, you know, like I'm not making it look like I was taking them. I was literally just kind of like looking at them, whatever. After the conversation was over, 
Nobody realized that I rolled up the sheets of wristbands and shoved them in my sleeve. I would normally, I would feel bad if this rave was not a big company throwing it. And I only ended up using like four of the wristbands. So I doubt that that really broke their bank. Yeah, so I managed to get wristbands for me and my three other friends going to this rave and we show up later that night and we put on the wristbands. Before I showed up, I asked my coworkers, should we sneak in the back entrance or should I go in the front? And they were telling me to go in the front and that was scary because that's where the um, security is and I didn't want to get my ass beat up. But I trusted my coworker. Me and my three friends walk up to the front of the building. We walk up and what you're supposed to say is, hi, I've already been here. We were just outside taking a breather. And the guys look at me and my friends kind of whisper a little bit. The two security guards and the girl at the front door look at me and my friends like, I'm just playing, you guys go in, have fun. Me and my friends had a slight panic attack, but then we went in to the rave. Kind of weird. The rave was kind of weird, but it was fun. Uh, that was the time I snuck my friends into a rave. So hot in here. Oh. For the final story, this one's a good one. So I had this coworker, what should I name her? I'll name her Elsa. Okay, Elsa was one of the supervisors at the time. And Elsa, let me tell you, was a bad bitch. She was a badass. Every single nerd that walked into this laser tag place probably fantasized about Elsa, like not even being dramatic. She had long dark hair, hourglass figure, pretty face, was good at laser tag. She was literally a video game character. This girl was my favorite supervisor. She was the funniest, she was sarcastic, whatever. She also had a shady side to her though. I thought it was funny that every once in a while on a shift, she would be like on her phone and she would randomly be like, hi, can you run the laser tag games for a second? I need to go outside and pick up my shipment. And I'd be like, what do you mean by shipment? Anyways, and one night on a rave night, we were all hanging out in the laser tag area, employees only. It was getting pretty late. The rave was really loud at this point. So on rave nights, it's kind of every man for himself. The employees are working, but like you can easily be on the job and not really having to work because with that many people in the building, other than security, like the employees can't do much. So we're all on laser tag. And my coworker says to all of us, hey guys, I'll be right back. And we're all, okay, Elsa, like be careful. So she leaves for like 10 minutes, comes back and she walks up to me and my coworkers and goes, guys, guess what? And we're all like, what? She holds out her hand, opens it and goes, I got Molly. And I'm instantly like, oh my God, like what, what are you doing? You you're wild, you are wild. And she popped it in front of me. She really just swallowed the pill right in front of me. And yeah, so my supervisor popped Molly on the clock on a rave night at a laser tag facility. You like can't make this stuff up. I'm not even kidding. But if any lawyers ask, it is, uh, it's fictional. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this. I wouldn't even call it a story time, more like story times all bunched together. I think I did pretty good at explaining everything. I feel like I'm so at story times, but oh God. Anyways, I hope you enjoyed. Comment down below what your favorite part of this series of unfortunate events was and subscribe if you haven't. I'm gonna go. Hope you have a wonderful night or day whenever you're watching this and I'm gonna go. Bye.